Hey, Joe here from the Bees in Your Backyard. I'm super excited because today we're gonna get to do something that I've always wanted to do. Today we're gonna make a bumblebee house. So I've been doing some research online and it looks like it's pretty easy. But before we get into the house building, let's talk about bumblebee biology. So bumblebees are social, kind of like honeybees. They have a queen and they have workers. But unlike honeybees, bumblebees have annual colonies. So this means the colony starts over every year. So in the spring, a queen that's been hibernating all winter, the queen comes out and she starts looking for a good nesting area. So naturally, most bumblebee species nest underground in abandoned rodent burrows. So she's gonna be flying around the ground, looking through the leaf litter, looking for one of the entrances to one of these abandoned rodent burrows. Once she finds a good nesting spot, uh, she'll do some you know, housekeeping in there, clean it out a little bit. Then she's gonna collect pollen and nectar and start her colony. So she brings the pollen and nectar in and she starts to lay some eggs. She is mated before she started hibernating and she's storing that sperm for this purpose. So she starts making this nest, she makes some nest cells, she lays the eggs in those, and as soon as those eggs emerge as adults, those are her workers. So from that point on, the queen stays underground in the nest and the workers go out and continue to build the colony. They do this throughout the summer. Then in the fall, this colony makes new queens, next year's generation basically. So these new queens then will come out, they will mate and find a place to hibernate. The rest of the workers and the previous queen will die before winter starts. So that's the basic biology of a bumblebee. So knowing that, we can try to design our bumblebee house to fit in with this natural life cycle. So it's a pretty easy process. I've made some instructions online. Here we go. These will be available in the link. Um, basically, I went to Home Depot and I got this board. This is a, a cedar fencing. It's six feet by five and a half. So six feet long, five and a half inches wide. Um, I think this will work for me. It's rough cut uh, and cedar should be pretty resistant to the weather. A lot of people use plywood, but I thought I would try it with this. We also have, this is a three quarter inch poly pipe for sprinklers. I got this rather than PVC pipe. So the three quarter inch is roughly an outside diameter of one inch. Uh, I got this because it's black. I thought that would kind of mimic a hole in the ground better than white PVC pipe. I have some really fine mesh. This is gonna be used to uh, cover up the ventilation holes that we will drill and we don't want ants to get into our bumblebee house and raid it. I have some glue so I can glue in the, the entrance pipe and also glue around the uh, mesh. I have drywall screws. So I chose to use drywall screws rather than outdoor screws um, because they're a little bit thinner gauge, a smaller diameter. I don't wanna crack my, my wood when I'm drilling into it. Of course, I have my measuring tape. I have a drill, both, both to drill my ventilation holes. I need to drill my entrance. This is a one inch uh, bit, so I can drill a one inch hole for the entrance. And then my driver. What we need is we need two side panels. These are gonna be five and a half inches, which is the width of my board, by nine inches. Then we need a top and a bottom panel. The top is 11 inches, the bottom is 11 inches. And then we need three uh, panels for the front, the inside, and the back. So I'm just going to measure this real quick. I'm going to use my square here to get nice straight lines. Then we'll take this outside to cut it. So I'm not going to worry too much about my woodworking skills, which are fairly limited. I'm just going to try to get a functional box and see what we can get. Um, I just have my skill saw and a plug-in in the wall. So let's get going. Okay, so I have my inside pieces in the front and the back. I have my two side pieces. I have my top and bottom. And then I have an extra piece just in case I wanna make an extra long top section. I cut a couple extra entrance tunnels. I wasn't sure exactly the length to do. <laughs> let's bring these inside and screw them together. Okay, we have our pieces of wood cut. Uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this together. This is one I made yesterday or started making yesterday. This is the basic idea. So we have long rectangular box. This is the nine inch piece, front, back piece, front piece. Um, we're gonna drill a hole in the bottom of the front piece. The bumblebees will enter in this hole. 
This little front room, they call it the vestibule. This is kind of like a mud room in your house. This is where you take your muddy shoes off. This is where the bumblebee will clean herself. She'll defecate in here. Before then, she enters the nesting chamber. We'll put soft stuff in here like cotton and other things. But basically, that is gonna be your house. And then you will put one of these on top and you'll be done. So let's put it together and see how it goes. So these are my side pieces. On the bottom, I'm gonna push the side pieces all the way to one edge. This is gonna be the back. The front is gonna have this kind of landing platform, kind of like the front porch. So we're gonna put our two side pieces on here to do this. I'm gonna do some balancing. <laughs> just threw a drill bit on the ground, I mean a, a driver. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to balance it there. I'm not too worried about the strength because this is just gonna be sitting on the ground. So I'm just gonna put two screws in here to kind of hold it together. Okay, does it look like a bumblebee house yet? The reason we have our front piece and our back piece at different uh, lengths is because the back piece, I wanted it to cover from the very bottom here all the way up to the top so it's level with the roof. The front piece is gonna be sitting on this front porch. And so we had that slight difference. So I'm gonna start with my back piece. Okay, so we have the back. But before we screw the vestibule and the front piece on, we need to drill the entrance hole. So this is a one inch hole. There's various uh, opinions online about how deep this should be, but regardless, it goes down near the bottom of the entrance. I'm gonna try to put mine right near the very bottom. So I'm gonna drill this hole. I'm gonna drill a similar hole in the vestibule. And I'm gonna do the same with my vestibule piece. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Perfect. Okay, next step, we want to, let's see, I think I'm gonna put my front door on first, my front panel. So I started screwing this together, started screwing the front and the back pieces on, and I started splitting the wood. And so I don't want my wood to split very much. I threw some wood glue in there and clamped it together for a little while. I decided I'm gonna put some pilot holes in here just so I can uh, make sure that it's not gonna split. Okay, pilot holes have been drilled. We have the vestibule, we have the back, and we have the front. Let's start putting this together. So hopefully, when I start screwing this together, it won't split the wood. Then we want that center piece for the vestibule. Mine was a little bit snug, so I had to sand off the edges here so I could fit it in. I'm gonna make sure I'm lining it up with the pilot holes that I drilled. So this doesn't have to be really, you know, it's not a load bearing wall. I'd put two holes on this side. I only did one hole on this side. Again, it's just keeping that wall in place. Okay, so we have our house, the two inside chambers, the front door, the inside door, which is down there. We are basically done. So now all we have to do is we insert our tube, which is the front entrance tube. I want it to be, a, you know, maybe a finger width right there. I want enough space for a bumblebee to land and be able to crawl in. Then on the inside, you can see that there is space for that bumblebee to enter the vestibule, walk around a little bit, clean herself, and then she can go farther in into this nesting chamber. 
We also need ventilation holes. So in this nesting chamber here, uh, if it's too sealed, that can lead to fungus growth and moisture problems. So I'm going to drill three holes. I think this is a 5 16 bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter the size, just want three ventilation holes, three or four, uh, up, in the, up in the top corner. So I'm gonna drill these holes, and then I'm gonna cover them up with some of this ultra-fine mesh so ants don't get in. So I have three little holes up here. Some people might wanna staple these, staple the, the uh, mesh to the board. I've heard, I haven't experienced this, but I have heard that staples still leave little gaps for small ants to be able to crawl in. So I'm just gonna put this mesh right over there and then I'll just glue around it. So I'm just gonna kind of draw a circle right around here with the glue. I want a nice seal, because I do not want ants to raid my bumblebees. So once you've filled the nest with soft nesting materials, uh, people use cotton, I'm gonna use gerbil nesting material, then we put the lid on. A lot of people just set the lid on and we'll put a, a brick or a rock on top so they can check the, the progress. You might want to nail it in or screw it in uh, to keep it kind of secure. I think I'm gonna use this longer piece. This is the extra piece from our fence post. So I have more of a overhang in the front. So there's just no chance of rain kind of going into that entrance. So there is our bumblebee house. It's not too hard. I'm super excited to put this out. So something that we need to consider is if you do decide to make your uh, top removable so you can check on the progress of the hive, bumblebees as a group are social. So they're, they're, depending on the time of year, there will be a queen and several workers in here, dozens of workers in some cases. So if you take the lid off, that will not make that queen and workers very happy. And so you are likely to get stung. Uh, also, the more you are manipulating the hive, especially open, opening up the, uh, the top to look into the nesting area, that's gonna disturb those nesting bumblebees and could cause them to abandon the nest. With mine, I think I'm just gonna screw this lid on and, and just keep it solid. I wanna encourage bumblebees to nest in my yard and I'll be able to see the activity by just watching the entrance here. If I see bees going in and out, I know it's active. Also, where do you put this bumblebee house? Well, you want to put it in your yard. Often people put it at the base of a tree or the base of some fence posts. There's an interesting study that tried uh, establishing bumblebee nests in nest boxes up in Canada in three different areas. One set of nest boxes they actually buried and had the entrance tunnel coming up out of the ground. Another one they installed in the side of a tree a couple feet up. And then another one they put a bunch of grass around it so it was, looked kind of like it was buried but it was just grass. They found that the one that was up in the tree a little bit had the most nesting. The one that was buried had the second most and the one that was surrounded by grass had zero bumblebees nest in those ones. So I'm just gonna put it in my yard kind of near the edge of one of my fences where I've seen bumblebees uh, flying around before, and I hope that they find it and nest in it. So that's it. Seems pretty easy. I hope it works. So I've been doing a lot of research, and in a lot of studies, only about 10% of these bumblebee houses that researchers are putting out in the field, only about 10% get colonized by bumblebees. So about 100 years ago, there was a study done that suggested that bumblebee houses that have been nested in by mice have a better chance of being colonized than bumblebees that have not been nested by nested in by mice. Uh, their suggestion is that this might be due to an odor. Maybe the bumblebees are smelling the abandoned mouse burrow um, and then preferentially choosing that. But other studies have found the exact opposite of that. For example, there was a recent study, well, recent as in the year 2000, a study of bumblebees nesting in New Zealand. They found that 
whether or not there were mice nesting in the nest in the nest box beforehand made no difference to these bumblebees. And now that study is interesting because New Zealand doesn't have native bumblebees. And so this isn't exactly a natural scenario. But either way, it's kind of an interesting thing. How can we make more bumblebees nest in these artificial nest boxes? So I made two nest boxes, which isn't very much. One of them I'm gonna put the uh, nesting material from my daughter's gerbil cage in there, so maybe it'll smell rodent-like. And the other one, I'm just gonna put some cotton from the, from the fabric store, this cotton batting that most people are using. I do have four species of bumblebees in my yard. I have seen Bombus huntii, Bombus centralis, Bombus griseocalus, and Bombus fervidus, all in my yard. So it seems like I have a pretty good chance of attracting some bumblebees to these nesting sites. I've even seen mating bumblebees in my yard, so I know they're nesting nearby. Let's see what happens. I guess you'll have to tune in later this summer and we'll see if I get any bumblebees in these boxes. Also, I wanna know if any of you have tried making bumblebee boxes or if you've had any luck getting bumblebees to nest in your yard. Please leave a comment below so we can all kind of learn together and figure out the best way to make this happen. A lot of bumblebees are in steep decline in the US or across North America, across the world in fact. So maybe if we can figure out the best way to make these bumblebee houses, we can provide habitat for some of these bumblebee populations that are struggling. Subscribe to our channel, check back in, and let's see if I can get some bumblebees to nest in these boxes. Bye.